So next up, Rafi, um, he's going to tell us what he learned about Agile at 18F. And Rafi Vilas is a co-founder and former innovation specialist at 18F who loves to share about how Agile can help government meet user needs faster. He has worked on a project to create citizen-centric government applications called My USA, and another to make government acquisitions easier titled C2. The poll he wants us to take today asks, what's your primary role on your delivery team? Are you the product or business? Are you the scrum master or a facilitator? Are you a developer or a designer? Or are you not on the de delivery team? So let's see what our audience is today. So 37% of us said product or business side, 31% said they're a scrum master or facilitator, 8% developers, we don't have any designers here, and 24% of you are not on the delivery team. Welcome, Rafi. Thank you, can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Awesome, well thanks everyone for the opportunity to talk a bit today, I think I must have taken a cue from Rob and his hand-drawn slides because I did the same thing. Um, so this is a talk about a, a few things that have helped me in the practice of Agile, in particular some things I learned while at 18F. I'll very quickly give some background before we get into that. Um, once upon a time, there was a lonely designer and developer uh, guy, it was me, working out of Starbucks. I was wearing the designer, the front end, and back end coding hats all at once. Um, I was having fun, but I was exhausted. The idea of team delivery was so foreign to me. Uh, there's my little coffee cup and my lone laptop. I wasn't yet with 18F, so that was my mistake drawing that. Um, I kept hearing about Agile, but for me it was synonymous with uh, simply the extreme programming techniques like pair programming and test-driven development. Um, I wanted so much to be Agile, but I think it was mainly because I didn't want to uh, work alone anymore. Uh, but I did know that uh, learning Agile was, uh, it meant getting on a team of people. So I left the life of a one-man show to find a team to be Agile with. Uh, shortly after this epiphany, I landed a job at Groupon doing full stack development, where I was able to learn uh, what it was like to actually work on a team and a bit of what Agile meant as well. Um, and it wasn't just about pair programming. A lot of other teams were uh, doing Scrum, and it was mainly the source of, uh, or that, that structure in Scrum resonated a lot with me. It uh, gave me a base for how to deliver my work, and uh, that's how my journey into agility started. At that point in my career, government one wasn't at all on the radar, but I finally had the opportunity to put my technical and design knowledge to use for real in the public sector as a PIF or Presidential Innovation Fellow, I'm sure you've heard, uh, in 2013. Um, but I was still so still. clueless about government. Uh, that first week I learned that Obamacare and ACA were actually the same thing. Uh, but it was, it was great. Uh, our team wrote a bit of code and contributed to a project called MyUSA, which is a single sign-on solution. Um, and it was uh, a great to be a PIF. Uh, most of my time at 18F was spent as a product lead working on a little uh, application called C2. It's a piece of software that streamlines approvals for government purchase card holders. Uh, I believe its uh, future with the client agency might now be in question, but I did want to uh, share some of my takeaways from being on that team, and I hope they offer some insights into your projects. So my first lesson learned is uh, get it out of your head and make it visible. Uh, making things visible has, has been a big part of uh, my process, allowing me to stay in sync with other people as change happens. Uh, Rob mentioned drawing a map of your legacy system, so that's in the same spirit. Over the past couple of years, I've become a huge fan of the Service Blueprint, a collaboration tool I learned through Adaptive Path, um, and it's great for making a complex process visible and is a really good example of how to um, just get things out of your own mind and making it visible, especially when you need to share that um, with a group of people. Uh, with multiple users, touch points, and actions, a service blueprint, pr blueprint gives a structure for mapping out a service. Um, here's what the C2 project uh, blueprint looked like. Um, and quick shout out to Amber Reed from 18F. Um, she is a wonderful designer who helped us create this. And we mapped out the users of the system, 
the activities and the system related functions we created with input from our team and end users. And so we get shared understanding across all team members and the ability to communicate uh, and make decisions around this system. Here's an example of how we started using it in other uh, instances. Uh, we're using it here to give a status on the different parts of the app. So the, the little smiley faces here, the devs saying how happy they are with a particular part of the code. Uh, we also use it uh, to map out the current state and the future state um, of the application as it evolves. So we would um, take this and use it for workshops and any effort where we're trying to change the actual process. So uh, also along the lines of getting it out of your head um, and more visible, a couple other quick examples is to make it shareable um, at a smaller scale. Google Docs is a simple tool to make everyday conversations visible. And at 18F, we were often creating Google Docs just spontaneously at meetings where multiple people uh, could share and um, contribute to a meeting, uh, meeting notes. And you'd be surprised um, how useful this is. Um, I know for myself, moving from 18F to another agency where we don't do this at every meeting, you really see the benefit of capturing those things. And we're trying to do that and capturing action items and um, you know, simply what, what do we decide on um, is one benefit from um, doing that. The last thing that I would mention in regards to getting it visible is making things uh, demoable um, or you know, do your demos. So at the end of your sprints, make sure that you demo. Um, but um, in addition to that, um, I would really highly encourage people to start using screencasts. It's really helpful to, to, to do that because people don't end up showing up at meetings, they get busy, um, and then all of a sudden you're, you're doing uh, demos three or four times to catch people up. Um, so it's, it's such an easy um, thing to do nowadays on QuickTime, you just uh, uh, record a screencast and um, you're off to the races and, and then you can actually share that uh, later. Uh, one nice story about this is at DOL, we're starting to execute on an app um, that was once dormant, and it's actually a project that Rob Reed and Jesse Taggart worked on, um, earlier speakers today. And Rob actually made a video um, of that MVP, and it made a huge difference in the understanding of the state of that project as we were picking it up uh, two years later. Um, so that was... Uh, a nice little success story about having a screencast. My second lesson is ruthlessly find users and stay connected. So as a PIF, uh, I was given the recommendation to find the veterans of uh, the government and in your work, or uh, shall we say the dinosaurs, um, not to, meant to be de derogatory at all. Um, this dinosaur is nice and fun, it's got a headband and been through a lot of ups and downs in government, but these are the people that have been around solving the same problems that uh, you're solving. And the command given to us was you must find these people. Uh, for the C2 project, uh, our dinosaur was Anthony. He was a young dinosaur, um, recently out of college, but he was hardworking, but uh, he had already tried to solve the same problem that we were trying to solve um, using Google Docs. <clears throat> And uh, he turned out to be the project's biggest champion. He is well connected within the agency. He helped us uh, navigate client users. He was a SME. Uh, he ended up being a product owner uh, in the process. So uh, you should definitely find uh, out who those people are. Relatedly, uh, reaching out through your entire network to find potential users is important as well. Uh, when C2 was just a good idea, uh, we intended on getting immediate feedback uh, from people, but had absolutely no users, zero. Uh, the original research was grounded in the insights from user interviews, but those users weren't accessible once we began prototyping. Uh, we fortunately were able to make a connection with a trainer at the agency, and um, what better way to find a target user than to talk to them while they're all going through orientation and training. So we kind of piggybacked on one of the orientation meetings, asked for five minutes at the end of the training session. And um, out of the 100 people, we had 20 some odd people that had raised their hands um, after the demo saying they wanted to help. And they were the first seed into our uh, trusted tester program. Uh, which at that point was just a name. And this is uh, one of my 
uh, takeaways as well is it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be just something that you put a name on. You say, hey, we're doing the Trusted Tester program. Join us and help us to improve the software. And you'll be amazed at how many people would respond to that, um, that officialness of it. My third uh, learning around uh, users is uh, finding those people that aren't exactly enthusiastic about your effort. So these are folks who don't like the change. They're skeptical about the new approach. Uh, like our happy dinosaur, they have been around and have seen waves of change, but probably without any progress. Um, for C2, um, our, uh, our skeptic was Donnie. Um, he didn't look like this, so um, yeah, hopefully this, this uh, doesn't indicate who he is, but he, he kind of had the same demeanor um, toward the software. Um, I thought the software was awesome. Uh, he didn't want it. He thought it was uh, a threat to the previous process. And that got our team out of our way of thinking um, that everything was just great and we're awesome developers and designers. Um, and it helped ensure that we were considering someone like him um, in our work. How am I doing? Five more minutes. See if I can crank through my uh, last lesson learned. Um, this has to do with taking care of your team, uh, building trust, helping each other grow, and ultimately del delivering good work. Uh, there's a phrase that I've told myself for years now, which is transcend your labels, um, or in the book, Agility Shift, uh, Pamela Meyer calls role elasticity. Um, it's the focus on getting things done over role definitions. Um, at 18F, I learned that ag Agile isn't just about creating product in an Agile way. Um, it's changing the way people do work, it's culture change, and it's process change. One practical way that showed up as we prepared to launch C2 in our first group of users uh, was the need to train people. Uh, we took it upon ourselves to do it ourselves uh, because we didn't have the resources to do otherwise. We took over a training room in the basement of GSA, training dozens of people. And uh, I love the fact that we were all training end users, uh, developers, designers, um, product. Uh, the entire team got involved. Um, I love to tell the story about CM, who's one of our developers. Um, and in illustrating one, uh, the change of different roles as he was describing how to use the software, he would turn his cap around like Stallone in over the top and say, I'm now the administrator. And so I love that, you know, everyone kind of had their own flavor teaching and um, we all kind of went beyond our roles. And um, I really encourage everyone to find ways for your team to go beyond their roles uh, to all of their skills and uh, to, achieve, to achieve the outcomes that you're looking for. Uh, the last thing I would say about this as far as team is to be willing to change the process, uh, be vocal about the process um, may, and make changes. Uh, for the C2 team, we went through a couple of waves of how we did stand up, for example, uh, from um, online web uh, three times a week uh, to a daily stand up uh, virtually. Uh, we also went from a scrum kind of process to Kanban, which was, you know, probably a little bit more painful, uh, but it all resulted from having our stand ups doing retrospectives um, and just realizing that the team needed to improve some things. And um, so I really encourage everyone to um, be open to those changes. Um, and uh, in kind of relation to that idea of changing your process, um, use GitHub or some of these tools that do make those things visible. Uh, one thing that we did do when we changed our process from Scrum to Kanban <coughs> is we mapped out the entire Kanban process and put it in GitHub and actually approved it. Um, as a process so that we knew that everyone had buy-in on that. And that, that worked out really well for us. So those are my three takeaways. Uh, get it out of your head, make it visible, uh, ruthlessly find users and stay connected to them and uh, build team trust. Thank you oh, all God. for your time. Thank you, Rafi. I think you have a future in slide development or maybe <laughs> turn this into a book the graphics are beautiful so thank you thank you um so rafi is not going to do a separate q a because he's on his way to the panel discussion 